For all your email management needs, look no further than AWeber, the preferred choice for geekoutdoors.com. Sign up today and you can get a 30-day free trial by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. Hey, welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On my continuing open shot series, today we're going to be looking at keyframes and transitions and how they work together. Now, if you've never done any type of video editing, the whole term keyframes might be confusing as it was to me. But basically what keyframes are, they all have to deal with animation. Okay, if you think about animation, there's frames in animation and then keyframes are key frames in the animation. So that's what it is. So it has everything to do with animation. Now, with OpenShot, they've done a lot of those really important keyframe animations for you. Okay, so if you've ever dealt with keyframes in other video editors, uh, specifically Caden Live or uh, in Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro, you know, the keyframes are pretty, pretty powerful, okay, but they can also be very confusing, okay? So let me show you an example of what a keyframe is right here, okay? And so, say for example, I wanted this to actually be different, okay? Say I wanted this to actually be a different size when it begins. So what I do is in OpenShot, there's already some predefined things you could do. Okay, so let's use something very simple called transform. And this is pretty powerful because if you were to do this in Caden Live, there's many steps in order to do this. And though, even though this might look simple, if you have to do this manually, it's difficult. So what I'm doing here is I'm adjusting the size manually. And what OpenShot would do is it will create keyframes for that. Okay. And so if I press play now, you see, so that's one long keyframe where it's this size. Okay. But say I wanted this to actually be back to its normal size. Okay. Now you can also right click on your mouse at this point. Okay. And you can do the transform again. And then you could manually expand it out. Okay. But if you want it to be accurate and want this to be 100%, all you have to do is look at the properties on the left. So whenever you select a clip, you'll notice that there's properties that show up on the left. And here you could set many different things. The location of it, you know, location of the video, whether it's on uh, the horizontal or vertical right here. And whenever you see zero, at least for locations, that means it's centered or whatever uh, location it was at whenever you adjusted it, okay? But say for example, scale, right? It's not 100%. And so all you have to do is go here to scale on this particular part of the clip, a specific keyframe, okay? And then you'll increase it to one horizontal and then increase it to one vertical. And now it's 100% of the size. And you'll, know to, you'll know that there's a keyframe in OpenShot if you see that there's a green dot right there, okay? And then if you press play, See, it starts off at that keyframe and then it expands to get to this keyframe right here. And then if you notice, like as you're going through this, if you look at the properties on the left, you see how it's changing to get to this keyframe where you have it at one. So that's a real simple way of understanding how keyframes work at different parts of your clips, different frames of animation. There's different things that you can you know, put in there. Okay. So, um, how this relates to transitions is if you go to transitions and I absolutely love the transition tool in open shot, it creates a whole bunch of different keyframe effects for you. Okay. Uh, like for example, say I wanted to add this particular transition, right? And I put it right here and let me make this a little shorter. Okay. So let's go ahead and play this. See, there's the effect. Let's make that a little longer. Let's do that again. There it is. And if you notice, just like the earlier example I showed you, there's two green dots. There's specific keyframes. And then also, when you get to this point, you'll notice on the properties on the left, right? It switches to the actual effect, the transition. See? And similarly to the clip property, so it's red meaning that it's highlighted on this particular part 
uh, of your entire track so right now it's highlighting the actual transition but if I click on here now it's highlighting my whole clip and see there's different properties there so let's go back to this transition and similarly to your project you know level properties you could adjust properties on the transition itself okay so for example the position right now is at 2.74 seconds let's change that to 8 seconds and so now it's moved it to the 8th second of the video and then let's move that back and now it's adjusted again and you could also change things such as the contrast brightness whatever properties that you want here okay and so like if I were to change this increase it you know there would be more contrast you know and so if I played it here see there would be more contrast there it's kind of hard to see but you get the idea okay and you could also do things such as replace image as well and start stop you know and with each uh, one of these transitions you have options okay you have different properties okay so if I added a cloud effect here and what you could do in your actual project you could zoom in and zoom out okay so right now I have it zoomed all the way in because this is a very short clip but you see, could see how this is useful you could either use this or you could use your control and then your scroll wheel on your mouse to do that as well okay so whatever is easiest for you so here let me scroll in closer so let's go ahead and play this and see how that looks okay and there's the next transition with the clouds and you know similarly to this other uh, transition effect you have different properties here as well but they're basically the same properties okay actually they are the same properties and so let me see if there's any difference I thought there were differences depending on the actual transition but let's see nope looks like they're the same but the whole concept is identical okay um, each one of these transition effects has different keyframes different points uh, that the animation changes okay and so that is how keyframes work in very general terms and how they are related uh, to your transitions okay now in terms of effects let's see if there's anything there as well no nah, there isn't okay so that's just entirely the whole effect is going to be blurred but let's see how that looks yeah the whole thing is blurred yeah I don't really like that blurry effect but you could always do undo okay so you could undo right there so it'll remove that last effect that you did and as you can see there with keyframes there are quite a few things that you can do here you know to spruce up your video um, to make it I guess more exciting uh, if you like that type of stuff like for example let's go ahead and rotate this okay so you can right click and do a rotate right here okay but if you do that it rotates the entire video throughout the whole video I, I don't like that so let me undo that so say I wanted to do rotation right I could adjust it right here at this particular keyframe I could come here to my properties I could rotate it like that okay let's see how that looks okay so let me press play you see so it'll rotate up to this point of the keyframe and then it just stays there because that's the last position that you wanted that rotation to be or you could also add another keyframe at this point and then you know you could adjust it you see and you know you could really go crazy with this and play around with it you know so if you're like the type of person who really likes to get into the video editing part of it then this is really cool you know I mean it really allows you to uh, make your videos you know as interesting dynamic or fun whatever you want to call it as you want or even as you know technically uh, proficient as you want you know like if you've seen any of my videos you know that I don't do a lot of types of editing on there you know because I'm that's not really my style you know I just like to get into the content you know but for some people they really like to spend a lot of times uh, making sure their video is edited in a certain way uh, it has certain type of look effects and some people who are you know more at a higher level you know they do things such as color grading and color correction and so forth you know like but that's uh, not really where I spend my time on videos but as you can see from this video uh, keyframing uh, with the 
clip properties and then with transitions you see how they all work and you know with the keyframes here you could also you know like remove them okay as I mentioned earlier you could do undo now the one of the things that I don't like about how keyframes is handled here as far as I know is unlike Caden live I just can't simply go here and remove each keyframe okay and so I haven't figured out a way how to do that I'm not sure if there is a way um, at least see like I, there's not a way for me just to simply remove a keyframe okay and also another thing is with the history and open shot one of the things that I don't see is like a history timeline okay where you could go to different points in the type of things that you've done okay you could go to a different point in the history you know like a uh, photoshop has that and Caden live has it as well premiere pro and final cut pro they all have a history specific point so that's kind of like a nitpick but you know just to be aware of that if you are making a lot of different types of transitions animations uh, edits just remember that you know you're gonna have to manually go back on your undo and as far as i know um there isn't a history you know timeline okay if I find one I'll go ahead and uh, create a video on that as well but that's it for keyframes and transitions uh, in open shot uh, like I said I love the transition features there are a lot of them you could play around with them and just as I showed you here you could play around with the different properties um, along with the more advanced uh, or more detailed clip properties as well and so if you had any thoughts on this be sure to leave it in the comments area below or if you had any ideas on any other things that you think you might want to learn with OpenShot um, if there's something that I learn uh, that I know then I'll go ahead and teach that if not if it's interesting I try to find a way to do that on OpenShot and so uh, if you did get value out of these videos be sure to leave a like and subscribe and if you wanted to support my channel further be sure to go to patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors thanks for checking out this episode and as always if you like these videos be sure to click on the subscribe button and for full written content audio content and additional geek stuff head over to geekoutdoors.com and i'll see you outdoors on the very next episode